Here's a picture of me at one year old. I'm eating an Atari cartridge while my brother plays what looks like Pac-Man. Video games were a huge part of my childhood, but when I turned 12, my interest in games started to wane as I got more and more into music. My mom sold my Nintendo and my Super Nintendo and my Game Boy as I was suddenly obsessed with Bob Dylan and I decided I wanted to be a songwriter. I was singularly focused on that goal, and throughout high school and the first part of college, I just didn't think about video games that much. But in 2001, after a seven-year absence, games were back in my life. It started with my bandmate, Sam. That's him on the left, with his luscious, curly, golden locks. He was really into PC games, and I would go to his room and play the original Hitman and Black and White. He also had an NES emulator, and through that, I started reconnecting with the games of my youth. I went on eBay and rebought every system and game that I'd owned as a child. I developed this serious addiction to the rush of nostalgia that I would feel when I rebought an old game and played it again for the first time in years. All these childhood memories would just come flooding back and it was so, so powerful. It wasn't long before I was channeling some of that energy into my songwriting. I would deconstruct the music of Mario games and create new songs out of the chord progressions and melodies. The first time I did this was with the Super Mario World castle theme. So this... became this. And this led directly to a rock opera based on Mario that I wrote and produced in grad school. We performed it all around LA, from a swanky club on the Sunset Strip, to a fancy theater, to a downtown punk venue, to a video game store, to the knitting factory. At this point, I was completely immersed in video game culture. I read all the blogs every day religiously. I had opinions on every video game issue, and I was playing a ton of games. It was just about at this time that I saw Game Life on YouTube. These kids who had just started making this show and ended up on MTV. Hell, I thought. I have ideas. I have the outfit. Then E3 happened and the Wii was announced, codenamed Revolution, and I knew I had to start my own show. I remember standing in the shower when I came up with the name, Game Jew. I liked it. It was silly, weirdly evocative. I started making videos. As is often the case with me, there wasn't much planning involved. I didn't have a specific direction I wanted to take the show. I just started to make stuff. I wrote a ton of songs about the Wii. I did little puppet shows with Mario and Toad. I talked about things that mattered to me with regards to video games, like what Miyamoto and Jonathan Richman have in common. You guys should listen to Jonathan Richman, because he's a lot like Miyamoto. The two of them are very similar. They both have enormous hearts. These just gig gigantic hearts, full of fun and happiness and just goodwill towards everybody. It was lo-fi, it was weird, and it was very much a product of where I was at that time in my life. The first episode I made got posted on Kotaku, which was a huge deal because I loved them. Over 3,000 people watched it and I was amazed. By the third episode, I was on Screw Attack alongside the angry Nintendo nerd and awesome video games, and I was having a blast. GameJu never had a huge audience, but I know I influenced some folks, such as Juwario, who was a fan and who eventually made his own amazing show. He was such a good friend. Here are some highlights from the two years I was producing GameJu. I ended up writing 40 songs about the Wii. That is a thing that happened. I did an episode entirely devoted to games used in education. I found myself in Africa, and I went around discovering what video game culture was like there. When my I waited for 36 hours and was the first person on the west coast to get a Wii. It was insane. I brought my NES and SNES with a small TV and set it up so people could play old school games while they waited. I serenaded the crowd with songs about the Wii. I serenaded George Harrison, who was, at that time, the head of marketing for Nintendo of America. I did an artist residency as Game Jew in Vienna, Austria for two months. Herzlich willkommen zu dieswöchigen Ausgabe von Game Jew. Grüß Gott, Oliver Anand.
I wrote singing video game reviews for 1UP.com. It was called The Mushroom Singdom. I did the music for and appeared in X-Play the Musical on G4. What's X-Play? Why, it's only the best show on television. X-Play, they review the games the best way. He's loud, she's a bouquet of flowers. I watch them on the TV every day. I did some coverage of USC's interactive media program where I saw and fell in love with Genova Chen's work. Later, I played a song at Flo's launch party for the PS3. In what was sort of a left turn, I was marching and filming in solidarity as Gameju at a May Day workers' rights rally in LA when the cops decided to open fire with rubber bullets on what was up until then an entirely peaceful event. It is. It's very... Hi. I think maybe they think they won't shoot since we're getting more into the public, but I don't know. Oh, oh. shit. Keep filming, keep filming, keep filming. Oh, oh my god. And finally, I tracked down and sang to the father of modern video games, the creator of Mario, Zelda, Donkey Kong. Pikmin, Star Fox, and so many others. Shigeru Miyamoto. When I look back at this stuff, I'm half amazed, like sort of in awe of myself for having had the gumption to put on that outfit and go around doing all that crazy stuff that I did. Well, at the same time, half of me is really embarrassed by it, and I sort of cringe at everything. Overall, though, I'm proud to have been Game Jew in a former life, and I miss him from time to time and think about, occasionally think about bringing him back. Maybe when Jupiter's a little bit older and, fingers crossed, gets really into video games, we can start making about video games together and Game Jew and Game Jew's son will return. If you enjoyed this video and or you enjoy watching my song a day every day, uh, please consider donating to my Patreon. For as little as a dollar a week, you can really help support me in all the stuff that I do. Every little bit counts and helps. And thanks for watching.